Ciao everyone, welcome back to another slow fashion video. I hope you're all doing well and that you had a wonderful week. Uh, today I am doing a part two to my last video about reasons why you don't love the clothes in your closet. So many of us have this issue where we just continue to shop and buy things that maybe we think we love at the time and yet we are constantly looking at our closets full of clothes and have nothing to wear. But I really don't think it's a case of not having anything to wear. I think it's about reframing our mindset towards our clothes. So I have seven, six or seven reasons, a couple more reasons as to why you might not be loving your closet as much as you could and ways to fix it how to reframe your thinking around your clothing so that you actually love and wear them. If you like this kind of content around using creativity and mindset shifts to reduce your consumption and still love your closet and feel stylish, hit subscribe below. You can also find me on IG. And I also have tickets to a live Shop Your Closet session, which is a wonderful opportunity to engage with other people in this community where we deep dive into understanding understanding how you can take the items in your closet and really refresh them and come up with new ways of styling them that are really true to your personal style to help you reduce your consumption and become a more conscious consumer. And if you came to yesterday's event, a huge, huge thank you for supporting. I'll leave all the information for tickets in the description box below, uh, but let's get started. Okay, I'm pretty sure all of us have some random dress or top that we bought on a whim or like super last minute because we had somewhere to go and somewhere to be that was important and we didn't take the time to plan our outfits. Instead, we just bought something, wore it once, didn't feel that great in it, uh, and now it's like just languishing in the backs of our closets. I think the biggest antidote to that mistake, which we have all done, is to plan your outfits in advance. And this goes for both everyday occasions and or formal occasions. If you don't have a lot of time, try simply planning for special events ahead of time. I think this is a great way to dip your toe into the outfit planning without getting too overwhelmed and thinking that you have to plan like a week's worth of outfits. Just pick one occasion and go from there. Giving yourself a little bit of extra time to plan what you're going to wear really opens your eyes to what you already have because you're in a proper state of mind to be creative and try different combinations. It also means you'll probably take the time to steam or iron or prepare whatever clothing you need. A big reason why we feel dissatisfied with our clothes is that they aren't even appealing. They're squished or wrinkled or just not washed. And this perpetuates the false idea that what we have is inadequate when really all we need is to take better care of our garments. Despite what we all think, there is no fashion police. We are not saving lives over here with our clothing or with our outfits. I really think that taking fashion and what we wear too seriously can be so crippling to experimentation and making mistakes and ultimately coming up with outfits that you might actually really like. What I do think we need to take seriously is our consumption of fashion. Even though there are only about 8 billion of us on the planet at this current moment, there are around 80 billion garments a year being produced. If you do the math, it makes absolutely no sense. We really don't need more stuff. So if there is any part of fashion that we need to start taking seriously, it's our consumption of it. It's actually pretty easy to fall back in love with your closet and shop less. And it can be really rewarding and fun. I mean, you can do that by watching more of the channel or buying a ticket to my live event, but you know, I'll let you decide. Okay, so what are your wardrobe stars and why are they important? I think a wardrobe star or a staple is very different from a basic. I touched on this in my last video about understanding the difference between a staple and a basic. I'll leave that video up here for you in case you missed it. The second part of this little <laughs> 
fashion homework. I just said not to take it too seriously. So, you know, do what you will with this information. Uh, the second piece to that suggestion is to understand why you like certain garments and to use that as a checklist to make smarter future purchase decisions. So understanding why you feel so good in certain garments, whether it's like a certain color that might be your power color or a certain cut, or maybe it's just a comfort factor. Okay. How many of us have done this? We buy something new or we buy a couple of new pieces and they're really exciting, you know, maybe we're trying to like exit our comfort zone of style, which is great. But more often than not, I've experienced or I've worked with virtual styling clients who have brought a new piece home only to have absolutely no clue how to style it or how to wear it or when they do wear it they just feel uncomfortable and not like themselves. And I think the reason why this happens is we often pair our new pieces with other new items or other items that are a little bit out of our comfort zone. So that's too many factors of being outside your comfort zone in your personal style. When you add something new to your closet, as exciting as it is, try pairing it first with your basics and your wardrobe stars. Because in the end, you're going to balance out that sense of newness and freshness, which is fine, but you'll still feel grounded in your own self and you'll actually get more wear out of those new pieces and hopefully integrate them more into your wardrobe so that eventually you have built a wardrobe that needs fewer and fewer newer pieces because you're already so satisfied with it. Oh my gosh, I say this so often in so many videos, but if you cannot describe your personal style or what adjectives you want to describe you and your style, then it will be so easy to just fall into the trend trap and want to wear what like every influencer and celebrity is wearing. Knowing your descriptors is a great antidote for getting lost and for making totally unnecessary purchases just because you saw them on someone else. They're like little guideposts that you could even just use a post-it and like stick them up near your closet and make sure that whatever you're putting on in the morning, whether you plan it or not, is in alignment with your style aesthetics and your values as well. I have also said this about a thousand times on this channel already, and that is to shop with a list. The reason why is that it helps you consider what's already in your closet so that when you are shopping, you're filling real tangible gaps that will allow you to get more wear out of what you already have. And again, slowly build a closet that you really love and that you won't have to add to or feel like you have to add to so often. I remember when I used to manage a boutique, people would always come in and one of the first questions that I would ask clients is, well, what do you have in your closet? Like, that will help us figure out what you need to shop for today. And I'm pretty sure in my entire like year and a half or two years of working at that boutique, no one knew what was in their closet or what exactly they were shopping for, unless it was for like a specific event. And this is why having a list and having a direction is so important to reduce consumption and to reduce those emotional pulls that often trigger us into making these mindless purchases that really don't add any value to ourselves or to our personal style. And as you're making your purchase, make sure that what you're buying actually fills that gap by coming up with, I would say, a minimum of five outfits that you can create using what you've already got in your closet. I have a video that's dedicated entirely to the questions that I ask myself before making a purchase, so I will leave that up here for you. Uh, and I think this really helps stop impulse shopping by changing the narrative into appreciating what we already have. So that is what I have for you today. Short and sweet, but I hope that you find these reframing of these limiting beliefs to our clients 
closet helpful? Let me know in the comments below if you found this video helpful and if you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so, so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your week. Ciao!